So that was the uh, analytics part of predictive quality analytics, right? So we did all the analytics. We used big data analytics as uh, and machine learning as uh, two major tools to do that analytics. And now let's talk about what we can get out of it because that's you know the the purpose of this entire process is to get some results out, you know. And let's talk about the results now. So what you can get, and I think you know uh, there are three things that you can get. You know, one is the diagnostics. You know, so you know you can you can use the diagnostics to improve uh, the e the immediate test results, or there can be a trend analysis that gives that comes to you through this churning of data or analysis of data, and gives you an idea that how you can improve. You, how, where are the faults in your test projects, or where? Uh, are the failures or where are the ma major bottlenecks or where where the productivity is hampering you know all those issues and data and, and data inputs come from the diagnostics part of it and what does it give you it gives you a dashboard you know so idea is to give give the the QA managers or QA directors or even the testers a dashboard to know where the failures are and and you know this is this can be across the project for a particular project, or it can be for a particular test run as well. And, and that's where the real analytics comes in and real diagnostic comes in. And you know you can find out where exactly the fault is and really go to the root cause and start improving it. Drill downs, which is again part of your dashboard, right? So you, you got a you got a 10,000 fit result, you know, you know now where the problems are, but you you have to go and drill it down to the exact bug or issue to really improve the, the test project. It might not be all your test cases are failing, it's just maybe two of the case, test cases are failing and they have like three or four bugs somewhere uh, within them and that's why they are failing. So you know you need to improve them and you need to drill down to that level. So that's what diagnostic will give you. So that's first part of it. Now let's talk about the second part of it, which is also very important and which is predictive and that's what predictive quality analytics is all about, right? It predicts, you know, how you can improve your quality. For example, it gives you an idea that, okay, if you improve set this set of test cases, your overall you know, software quality would be improved by let's say 40%. Or you know, if, you, if you improve this particular bottleneck, or if you work on this particular set of bottlenecks, your output of software quality would improve you know, exponentially or whatever. You know, in, in, in exact quantifiable terms, it will give you an idea. So that's your predictive quality analysis. It also give, helps you understand the efforts that would be required to achieve that quality, right? So again, the focus of predictive quality analytics is to give you all that is required in terms of insights to improve the software quality. And that's what it's, it's, it's doing here. So it might be efforts, maybe you are putting you know, unnecessary efforts on a, in a test project and your time to market is is you know increasing because of that you are not able to give a right quality software in time this will help you to do that so you know over a period of time if you do it if you if you understand this analytics improve you know implement that analytics and get the right outcome over a period of time you will re reduce your time to market to a very large extent uh, maybe you know or, you know reduce it by a few few days or months and uh, you know your your final outcome would be a much better software to your end customers. Finally, we are talking happy customers here because of this. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, the next level, the final level or the final frontier, so to say, is the prescriptive analytics. So now you know the diagnostics. You know what is wrong with the current test projects or set of test projects that you are running. You know, you know, you know, the, the, you now have the predictability over here through the predictive quality analytics. It gives you an idea that where, where to focus and where to improve to get the best outcome. Okay, so that's that's your prediction, right? Now you also need to talk about prescriptive analytics, and that's where I I feel machine learning comes in. You know, that's where the real benefit of machine learning com uh, comes in. In the real time, it gives you an idea to optimize or prioritize your your you know software test projects right it gives you an idea that okay focus on this many test cases improve here and you know you will be able to as i talked about right improve this set of test cases and you will improve your software quality by 40 percent that's prescription you know that's prescription for success and that's where prescriptive uh, prescriptive analytics comes in 
And you know, if you put all these three components together, you are talking about a much better outcome in you know from the data that you already have. So all this data that we are talking about, it's part of your system, it's available in your system. The only thing is it's manually impossible to analyze this data, structure this data, and find out right you know, uh, uh, prescription, uh, prediction, and, and diagnostics, right? So that's where, that's where this entire engine through big data analytics and machine learning comes in. And that's where, you know, Qmetry is pioneering the way. And, you know, I wanted to share this, this beautiful new, uh, you know, exciting technology that, you know, we are working on uh, with you. It's, you know, it's just not about Qmetry. I think it's, it's, uh, it's for all Q, uh, quality teams. It's something, pretty exciting to know uh, and you know I hope you like this particular video today uh, please share your feedback down here you know under the video you know in the in the comment section and you know we would love to get back to you and and you know know more from you and, and discuss more more with you about this exciting new concept uh, that we have, we have been talking about thank you